Hey there my fellow designers and creatives, hope you're all doing well. Welcome to another video in this series on redesigning a mobile app. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the search experience of the Fold Money app. There's a lot to learn from this video, so without any further ado, let's get started. All right, so here I'm in the Fold Money app. Now let's go ahead and start searching for something. Now there are a couple of things that we can actually search for. First of all, we can search for the category that you can see over here, this is the category. You can also search for a particular value. So in this case, you know, any of the values, you can search for that. You can also search for the person who you are sending it uh, to or you're receiving from. So in this case, you know, I received it from somewhere um, or I paid to somewhere, right? You could, uh, the payer or the pay, right? Either of that. So these are pretty much the three things that you can search for. Now let's go ahead and try to search one of them, right? Now the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type the word subscription. Now, the moment I start typing, you can see here that what happens is that the search experience is happening on the exact same level as the entire screen, right? And this is not really the right way to design a search experience. And I'm gonna show you screenshots later um, on Mobin of what a screen should look like, but you can right now just open five apps on your phone and tap on the search bar and you're gonna see that the search experience opens up in a new uh, model or a new screen or it replaces the entire screen. Because over here, you're sort of doing everything in line, which is a very weird experience. All right, and it's it's not really you know uh, the best experience because you're covering up a lot of space and it's very unintuitive because users are expected to have your own dedicated section to go search. Right, it opens up a new screen or a new model with only the search bar and nothing else. And I'm going to show you examples of that in a little bit. Right, but anyway, I'm going to type in the word subscription. All right, I'm going to type in subscription over here. All right, and now uh, this is what you get. Now I'm going to scroll down. Now what you see over here is that first of all, visually there's there's so much text, right? There's so many colors, there's, there's way too much going on, right? Um, and the important thing to ask is, what are actually people searching for and why are they searching for that? Now, subscription is typically a category and it's very unlikely that users are going to come and tap on the search bar and look at subscription if they're looking at details for the current month or the current year, because we have a dedicated section itself, which is basically your expenses and incomes overview analysis section, where you can go ahead and look at it. And I'm gonna show you a screen of that a little bit later, right? So basically in, what I'm trying to say is if I come down here to spending summary, I have this section called subscription, I can quickly change it to whichever time period I want, right? So there's no reason for me to actually go ahead and search for subscription in the search experience, right? So that sort of questions me and asks me whether I even need to have this category of this month, this year or all time, because I don't really need to see it, right? I can already see it over here in the spending summary. I know what it is for the current year and I can tap on this and I can see what it is for the current year. Actually, that was for the current month and this is for the current year, right? The answer is pretty simple, right? So there's no need to actually do this. The question is, do actually people want to know how much they spent on subscription all time? Most definitely not. Nobody is going to want to know how much you spent in your entire lifetime. You're obviously going to be looking at it for certain time periods, right? For this particular month, this particular week, the past six months, the past year, whatever it is, right? So you're not really going to be looking at that information for the entire time period. So when I look at this, it doesn't really make me feel that this breakdown of this month, this year or all time is actually even needed, right? Of course, we can look at data and sort of clarify that, but I don't even think people are actually searching for categories over here right? Now, even subcategories, if you tap on subscription, let's say I tap on subscription over here, you've got Netflix, Amazon Prime, YouTube, Spotify, Google Learning, whatever it is, right? So even these things, you have that information in the analysis section and you don't really need to come here in the search section. All right, great. Now, the next thing that we can tap on is the uh, specific uh, value. So let's say you're searching for a specific value. Let's say, you know, 12998, you know, you search for that and uh, oh, okay, that's weird. I thought I just saw it. 12998. Wow. Okay. Is the search broken? 12998. 12998. Uh, oh, okay. Doesn't seem to be working, which is, which is quite weird. All right. That shouldn't really happen because if I type in 6499, I should, ah, I get it. But for Okay, the search experience also is broken as you can clearly see over here. This is working, right? Now here again, right, when I type in a value, I'm looking for something specific in nature. I'm not really looking for this month, 
this year and all time. I'm not really looking for that information, right? What sort of user story can you make for some user who types in 6499 in the search bar, right? Nobody is going to be like, hey, how many times did I spend 6499? Nobody is going to think like that, right? So this section of this month, this year and all time is again making no sense for me in this case because it's hard to make a user story for it, right? Why would somebody type in 6499 in the search bar? It's mainly because they're searching for a specific transaction, right? And this total value of 30 32,945, 2,20,966. Nobody's looking for that information, right? So this section that I see over here, this top section which says results matching 6499 is absolutely not necessary at all in my opinion, right? And let me know if you guys disagree in the comment section. Now, the only thing that we can't really find out is the payer or the payee, right? Let's say I want to know how much I spent on a Netflix this entire month or this entire year, right? Now, of course, subscription over here, uh, if I come over here, um, this subscription could be Netflix, but I haven't actually tagged it Netflix, all right? So over here, if I type in Netflix in the search bar, it is going to take it from the paid to section over here, right? The merchants, right? Or we can even take another example, which is probably Zeroda, right? So Zeroda, I'm going to type in Zeroda, all right? Uh, all right, so I'm going to type in Zeroda, all right? And uh, we should get this. So now this is pretty cool. This is very helpful because it tells me that now for Zeroda, I ended up spending, you know, one lakh uh, this month and the previous and and this year I spent six lakh eighty thousand and I got four lakh you know forty eight thousand seven hundred twenty three. Now this information we can't get it anywhere from here to be very honest because we don't have a breakup at a you know a merchant or a recipient level. So maybe it makes sense to have it over here. But here's the problem with with this right. If we have it for Zeroda, then it probably makes sense to have it for categories and subcategories, right? But the thing is that we have this section in profile where we have this contact section. Now, right now, for some reason, it is only set to two because I set these manually, right? So this Chetan ICICI is my ICICI bank account. And I also created this HDFC bank account, you know, just for fun. And here I can get a breakup of every single thing, right? How much I paid to. So this itself is somehow like this group section that we spoke about, right? So if I come down here to the search and go to this group section, it is very similar to this group thing that we spoke about in the previous videos and very similar to what we're seeing right now, right? So for a particular group, you have some positive transactions, you have negative transactions. What if we could apply that same principle, same design, same chart for this concept as well, where you have a list of all your merchants and all the recipients as well, right? And unfortunately, at this particular point, there's nowhere in the app to find all of those things, which doesn't make much sense to me, right? It should ideally be there. So instead of calling this contacts, or maybe we could call it contacts, or I don't know, we would probably pick a different term. We would have a section where we would have all the specific payers and the payees listed over here, and you can tap on each one of them and you can look at the detail. You can look at things in a lot more detail. Very similar to this groups feature that we have, and I'm sort of repeating myself over here. So that makes me say that we don't even need this section of results matching Zeroda, where it says this month, this year, all time. We don't even need all of those things, right? Because to sum up, when it comes to categories and subcategories, we can find it over here in the summary section, basically the analysis section. And for recipient or a payer, we can have a separate section in the profile where we could look at it, right? This makes a lot more sense because you anyway have transactions with, with missing merchants, untagged transactions. So it makes sense to have that there as well, right? Now, the last thing that I want to talk about is something that was extremely weird and, you know, something that I never expected is now that we have these three things, which is this month, this year and all time, right? Let's say I do want to look at transactions for this particular year. When I tap on it, we get this transaction details screen with 15 different transactions and I have to swipe through all of them to search for something that I'm looking for. This absolutely adds zero value and is extremely confusing to users because you're not helping me search for something that I really want, right? Ideally, I'm looking for a specific transaction or specific set of transactions and ideally I want a list view like this and that is going to make me easily select it, right? It could be because I'm adding to a group, maybe I'm removing from analysis, it could be for whatever reason and this is a list view that makes it a lot easier for me rather than having this transaction because what if I have 50 transactions over here? 
I'm not going to swipe through 50 of them. I'm barely going to make it through the first 10. So this was something that really shocked me and I was very surprised that they came up with a design like this. Ideally, I would have wanted to see a list view like this, right? When I tap on this year, I would want to see a list of all the transactions for that specific year, right? And of course, we have the positive and negative. We could have, we could sort of deal with that in a different way, which we probably would have already done. Uh, in the previous videos, but definitely having a transaction screen, you know, with 50 transactions like this is definitely not the best experience, right? And it's not really solving any purpose, right? So hopefully that makes a lot of sense. So now let's jump into Mobin and Figma and look at things in a lot more detail. All right, so here I'm on Mobin and I've gone ahead and, uh, you know, sort of filter this for search bar. And what we see over here is we're going to look at a couple of screens is that the moment somebody taps on a search bar, it becomes like a full screen experience, right? And I'm gonna take you, uh, show you that with this example. So if I come over here, all right? So we have the search bar over here. The moment you tap on it, it becomes this new modal experience and there is absolutely nothing below other than recent searches or suggested searches, right? So it's very important to understand that any search experience you design, it needs to be in its own dedicated section and not really in line over there. It doesn't search over here. It takes you to this new area, this dedicated focused area where you can make a search, right? Let's look at a couple more examples. So Starling Bank, uh, this is already, this is in onboarding, so I'm not going to look into this. Um, here, you've got uh, YouTube Music, all right? So when you can see over here, you have the search bar. The moment you tap on the search icon, actually, when you tap on the search icon, it takes you to this new empty screen where, you know, you can start searching for whatever you need, right? Let's uh, look at a couple more examples where we have something inputted. Um, all right, nothing, all of this is empty search fields. All right, uh, let's look at another one over here. So line, all right, if I come down, um, okay, here we don't really have a search bar. You're going through profile uh, or basically the more menu. So I'm going to ignore this for now. Um, but anyway, you can see that it is its own dedicated search experience. All right. Um, here we've got Venmo. Let's see if Venmo. So again, in Venmo, uh, you see this people, businesses and charities, you tap on it and then you get into this own search experience with a back arrow, right? Um, let's try to look for a few more. All right. So Turo, this is a, some car rental app, I guess. Right. So we tap on city search address hotel. It goes again to, it again goes into its new dedicated uh, search experience. Right. Um, let's try clubhouse. So in clubhouse again, um, it is pretty much the same screen. All right. Uh, but it sort of overlays everything with the blank screen and you know, it's like a model. And when you tap on cancel, you come back to the original screen over here. All right. You've got uh, messages, right? Messages. When you tap on the search bar, it, you know, sort of hides everything and it becomes like the search experience. And basically it shows you the search bar on top, um, you know, very similar to Instagram. All right. Um, what else? What else? Uh, we've got Cash App does the same thing. As you can see, the search bar is on top. All right. Instagram, obviously, when you tap on the search, let's see if we can actually. Yeah. All right. So um, now now for Instagram, as you can see over here, the search bar is already on top. So, you know, there's nothing much to do that way, but it does re replace this entire screen over here. Right. Uh, but it's already on the search bar. So it's not really taking away any attention. All right. So that's all right. Um, and what else, what else, what else? Right, I think these examples are, you know, um, are quite enough, right? And if I come over here, even to this, which is Coinbase, so you tap on this and then you go to this, you, it opens up some sort of a modal or a, or a dedicated area where you can search for things, all right? And, you know, it doesn't have any other information like tabs or, you know, the existing content doesn't have anything over there, right? So the search experience really has to be designed in that way. So now coming back to Figma, I've just put a couple of screenshots so we can recap, right? So I've typed in the category, I've tapped in a value, I've tapped in another value. And when you just have one item, it doesn't show you this, all right? When you have just one item, it just, you know, just shows that one list item. Uh, when you tap in the payer or the payee, it does the same thing over here, all right? And like I said, this is something that we would want to take to the profile section and we would remove this entire section. Um, the same thing here as well, which is the payer or the payee, right? All right. So now coming to the initial design. Now, the first time I designed it, I did consider this where I did add it. So this month, this year and all time, I did design it the first time to see if it actually does make sense. But, you know, when I thought about the logic, I really felt like it doesn't really make sense because we can get this information in different sections of the app and users don't really have to come over here and search for it. Right. 
Um, and the other most important thing to understand here is that when they're looking for specific things like Netflix or subscription, you're actually not just coming to look at that specific thing. You're actually sometimes or most oftentimes you're looking at other categories or other merchants. You're looking at other things as well, right? You're not always just coming to look at one specific thing when you're doing an analysis, right? You're obviously looking at multiple things, right? So if you're looking at multiple things, looking at all those multiple things as a breakdown in the analysis section makes a lot more sense than coming here to search, right? But of course, we could look at data and then sort of finalize and understand if you know it makes sense or not. And when I tap on this section, which is basically this year, I would then see a new screen which just says eight transaction and all the eight transactions that add up to this value. In the current Fold Money app, we have like this transaction screen, which is like this carousel. I've removed that because that makes no sense. Here, we would just have a breakup of all the transactions that make up these eight transactions and this value, right? So this was the first iteration. Now, of course, the second iteration, I removed that top section itself. So I removed this top section. And um, as you can see over here, when I tap on the search bar, we go all the way to the top. We call it the search section. You have this back order to take you back, all right? We could sort of design the search bar in a different way, of course, but this is just one initial concept, all right? And then you can see all the transactions over here, which is basically all the transactions that it can do without sort of considering this month, this year, or all time. It just basically shows all the transactions for all time. And, you know, I would say this is a lot simpler and a better experience, right? So this is how I would definitely go ahead and simplify search from a visual standpoint, from an interaction standpoint, and from an experience standpoint, right? So I hope that makes a lot of sense. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment sections down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. And I'll see you guys in my next video. So then take care and bye-bye.